I'd like to address the issue of depression. Um, <clears throat> first for myself right now and then for someone else. A number of years ago, I, I spiraled down into a very depressed day and my life really was going well. I, I just was there. I remember walking out in the field in the middle of the night screaming, what? <laughs> you know, I was just so disconnected, I guess. Uh, this went on for a few weeks and then one night or one morning I got up and then went back to bed and got into a light sleep state and something called my name. And it was the most wonderful voice I had ever heard, and it dissipated, that depression it dissipated immediately to where I was back to where I normally am. And uh, Depression is absence of inner being. Yeah. Absence is too strong a word, but you know mm -hmm. what we mean. And it is always present for one reason only. You've been giving attention to lack. So. If you're wanting to know what your purpose is and you can't figure it out, then you're turning your attention toward lack and depression is on the horizon. In other words, it doesn't start out as depression, it just yeah. starts out as a little lack. But the lack, if you don't transmute the energy, if you don't pivot, then the, the subtle little irritation can turn to full-blown depression or full-blown anger. It is usually depression if it is pointed towards self and it is usually anger if it is pointed towards somebody else. But you don't have to define all of that, it's still lack, you see. Okay. Then what happened was, when you got disconnected, you heard us say earlier, if you have negative emotion and you don't transmute the energy or pivot, don't worry about it, it won't go away, it'll just get bigger. Well that's what happened to you, it just got bigger and it just got bigger and it just got bigger till you reached the point of strong wanting. You actually went outside and yelled, what? And in your outcry, even though you were in a lackful place, you were expressing strong, strong wanting. And when the wanting became stronger than the awareness of lack, then your inner being spiraled back into you. The thing that usually happens with depression is that you get lower with, with any negative emotion. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger if you don't take the time to pivot. Stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until you feel so defeated you stop struggling. Yeah. And in the moment you stop struggling, in the moment you stop pushing against, your inner being floods fully into you. Our friend has a similar story where he uh, w received a telephone call with more bad news. And he went outside and looked upward. He can still remember the snow falling on his face. And he said, I give up. Because he recognized that no amount of effort on his part was going to fix this. I give up. And in that moment, he had an infusion of non-physical energy that to this day he can remember with great detail. His hair stood up all over, bubbles through his body, a feeling of elation. It was so extraordinary, he went to a psychologist and said, what's wrong with me? I'm happy all the time. <laughs> what we've been talking about in all these hours we've been together is when you're full of yourself, you feel great, and when you're empty of yourself, you feel awful. What was... What said my name? I mean, it was different than a dream. It was oh, it is your inner being. It is your inner being projecting a block of thought to you that you translated. But it was, it was your inner being and everyone vibrating there, letting you know that all is well. And what they were saying, you see, yes. they were projecting all is well to you. You were the object of their attention. That's why you translated it as your name, because all of this non-physical energy looking right at you. And your name is the representation of you. Mm -hmm. The easiest translation of the rep representation of you. Remember, non-physical energy is not speaking words. Right. It is offering block of thought energy. And you are the translator of it. So what could be a better translation when hosts of non-physical energy, pure positive energy, is looking right at you and flooding you with pure positive energy? Isn't it logical that you would translate it as me, my name? Yeah because it was all focused at you. Good. I just have one more thing. That I have a friend, a uh, sister-in-law very close to me who was into such a dis uh, depressed state. She really is having a hard time getting out of it. She has this big black hole that comes to her, she said, and to the point where she doesn't want to live anymore. She's getting help now and hopefully she'll come out of it. Is that just she's so disconnected? She is giving the majority of her attention to lack. 
and most counselors don't help that very much yeah, because they true. because they keep prodding to try to find out what's wrong. Right. They keep they keep looking for something else to blame. First they blame the parents and then that was no longer yeah. popular. And then some of them started blaming past lives and and uh, <laughs> and and now uh, they're blaming uh, uh, fictional molestations. In other words, everyone is looking for something to blame when the whole blaming process is the process of disconnection. You see, yeah. the thing that would bring her out of it faster than anything is to begin looking for positive aspects, to look for things to appreciate, to talk about what she likes. Yeah. But sometimes it is hard. We were visiting with a woman not long ago and she said, Abraham, I want to be well. Can you help me? So we asked the question that you would expect Abraham to ask. We said, why do you want to be well? And she said, because I don't want to be sick. We said, good, you know what you don't want. And whenever you know what you don't want, you know more clearly what you do want. So what is it you do want? And she said, I want to be well. We said, good, why do you want to be well? And she said, because I don't want to be sick. We said, good, whenever you know what you don't want, you always know more clearly what you do want. So what is it you want? And she said, I want to be well. We said, good, why do you want to be well? And she said, because I don't want to be sick. We were getting nowhere. And she was getting angry with us. We've heard our physical friends talk about being stuck and we've always said you can't be stuck because energy is always in motion. But if there was ever anyone stuck, she was stuck because she was sending her energy. She was wanting one thing and flowing her energy in the other so equally that she could not budge from that spot. So we took the approach of some counselors. We saw that we could not get her to flow energy toward what she did want because her habit was so much the other way. So we decided to prod a little negatively just to get the energy to break loose. So we said, what's so awful about being sick? She said, I'm cooped up. I can't get out. We said, what's so awful about that? She said, I'm lonely. We said, good. You know what you don't want. What is it you do want? And she said, I'd like to get out more. Mm -hmm. And everyone in the room felt her energy break loose. Then we said, why do you want to get out more? And she began talking about what's out there. We said, what would you do? What have you ever done when you got out there? And she started describing, well, I'd go to the mall. I would, I would go get an ice cream cone. I would, I would walk in the park. In other words, as, you start, as she started to flow some energy toward what she did want, her energy broke loose. And within about 10 minutes, we said, how are you feeling? And she said, I feel wonderful. Her inner being was back within her, you see. So as a friend, talking to someone who is de depressed or disconnected, your dominant work is to do whatever you can to help them feel better. Two things are important. You're not going to help them feel better if you don't feel good. So if their depression has brought you to a place of seeing the lack too, you have nothing to give them. So our encouragement is that you go in for short snatches, spend little bits of time, talk for 30 or 40 seconds on the telephone. In other words, short little snatches so that you can infuse her with positive energy before she infuses you with negative energy. And let the dominant conversation be about what is wanted. And as you say, well, what are you going to do today? And she says, tells you what she can't do. Say, well, I don't, I don't want to hear what you can't do. I want to hear what you want to do. Or if, or if you could do anything, what would you do? Start turning your conversations with her toward that a little bit. And what she will begin to discover is, if she's going to have a conversation with you, it's going to be a conversation that is pointed toward what is wanted, that you are not one that is wanting to be a sounding board for complaining. And as she begins to recognize that, if her wanting is to feel better, she'll call you often. If her wanting is to grovel in her misery, soon she'll stop calling you altogether. Mm -hmm. Another thing that is very helpful to know is that no one is ever always connected or always disconnected. Even a depressed person has higher and lower times. If your goal is to connect with her when she is feeling better, you will synchronistically have better timing. If you're focusing on how depressed she is and your goal is to help drag her up out of the muck and mire, then that vibration is going to call you to her at her time of muck and mire. But if your goal is to be a value to her, then you will be inspired to better times interaction with her. You see what we are saying? At a time when she's more open to hearing you than at other times. And, and that will be of extreme value to you Thank and to her. One more thing we're wanting to say about this is that 
when someone is feeling negative emotion, there is a certain momentum that goes with it. And so they will often resist your positive momentum uh, just more out of habit, even though they want the other. So if they resist you, understand it and be easy about it and, mm -hmm. and understand that they just have some momentum going. But don't, don't you then resist their resistance or then they pull you over to what they are about. A very good process that is very powerful when you are around someone who is in a negative place and they bring you to a negative place whether it's somebody who makes you angry or somebody who makes you feel depressed just because they're depressed. All of you are quite empathetic. Have you ever heard somebody talking about an aching back and before you know it your back is aching? Thought is very powerful. So a very good process, you can use it with your, your little niece also, it will be very powerful and effective. When you feel yourself shifting from feeling good to feeling bad as a result of an interaction with another person, say to them, ah, I'm feeling rotten and I was feeling good a minute ago. Excuse me for a minute. I'm going to go off and make a list about what I want and why I want it. And when I get feeling better, I'll come back. Then go into the other room, close the door, go into the bathroom if you have to, go someplace apart from whatever it is that is happening and do it. Take a notebook and write what you want and why you want it until you feel better. It usually only takes two or three minutes, often less. And when you get feeling better, come back. They will notice you're feeling better. It will be obvious in the way you are exuding. And before long, they'll say, what are you doing there? <laughs> Very powerful. Let it be about you, not about them, and they won't feel resistance. If you make it be about them, they'll resist you. If you let it be about you, they'll follow you. Good. I've seen that word. So don't be afraid to say, oh man, you're bumming me out. <laughs> Talk about a black cloud. I walk in here happy and now I feel wretched. Mm -hmm. What sort of vibration are you offering? In other words, you're saying it light and lovingly, but help them to see that their energy is not in harmony with your wanting. It's not in harmony with their wanting either, you see. And then show them how to get it flowing. Have fun with it. Make them laugh. Lighten up. Talk about what is wanted and why it is wanted. Teach them the techniques that work. You know them. Good.